afternoon, brothers and sisters. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus be always with you. As we prepare ourselves now to receive God's holy word, we ask for the gift of a contrite heart. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God, he cried out in a loud voice to the four angels, who are given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne worshiped God and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might 
be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. John, beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. And so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Everyone who has hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. This prayer of Anthony DeMello, pretty helpful these days, especially when we have elections, we all get kind of like anxious. We would like people to vote exactly the way we do. Those words from the gospel, they flow out of the heart of the Beatitudes of Mary. As she's raising her son Jesus, She's looking at people with the eyes of the attitudes. And she's teaching her son how to see people that way. You can be a beatitude, which means you can see beatitudes unfolding in our world. Even in the midst of conflict, you can see that. Blessed are those who create institutions where more people become owners. This may strike you as something not related to the gospel, but in the thinking of the church, this is directly part of the church's social teaching. That for a country to have more owners, more ownership, is a big blessing. And that comes from Leo the 13th. In that example, there is a Mantragon, which is a very successful co-op. Blessed are the owners who offer a just wage and those who strive for a just wage. So we remember Henry Ford and so many other people that we know that offer a just wage for their workers. And it's a huge blessing that you're able to do that. And then we know that one job ought to be enough you know, so that people could raise a family. It's so important that people be able to raise a family. Blessed are those who mourn for their country. Alexander Solzhenitsyn, why experience with the evil, the danger of being hypnotized by socialism as if it's going to solve everybody's problems. It's been tried before. One of the great mistakes is to judge policies and programs by their intentions rather than their results. So there's always going to be a time when people question capitalism because it's messy. It's difficult to set it up perfectly. God's idea is my party's platform represent all of God's ideal. I think most of us could have the humility to say, maybe there's a lot of what God wants in my party, but it's never complete. This is a little joke from Chesterton. The business of progressives is to go on making mistakes. The business of conservatives is to prevent mistakes from being corrected. This is somebody who was very concerned about the world becoming more socialist, Chesterton. And so he wanted to emphasize the ideal of Christianity as the best way to counter the move of the world towards communism and socialism. For us, blessed is our country because it espoused the ideal of fair competition in football, we want it to be a fair competition. We don't want one team to wipe out completely all the other teams. The example of wiping out everybody completely is monopolies. When capitalism is corrupted, when people can't compete fairly, it damages all of us. It 
debt that weakens our democracy. This is something a lot of us don't know about John Paul, what he said. It is unacceptable to say that the defeat of so-called real socialism leaves capitalism as the only model of economic organization. I think a lot of us assume it's either or, that there's nothing in between. And that book there, Ethics and National Economy, has had an influence on four popes in the last century. It's a very important book in the history of the church. It's written by a Jesuit in Germany. So once you abolish God, the government becomes the God. That was Chesterton. And we could see that happening in people's place in countries. And that list there of social teachings of the popes is a long history. And it goes back to when Constantine abandoned Rome. He went off to Constantinople. The church was left with a huge vacuum. And it had to learn quickly how to create governments, how to create social theory. And it made many, many mistakes along the journey. But there's wisdom behind those documents. Catholic social teaching emphasizes solidarity. If you want to learn a little bit about what that might mean, there's a, a website called The Distributors Review. It's written by Catholics in our country. Solidarity. It is a firm and persevering determination to commit oneself to the common good. That is to say, to the good of all because we are all really responsible for all. That picture there is of, of Taiwan. Formerly Samosa. Formosa. In 1949-1950, the economy of Taiwan was in the hands of just 20 families. Everyone else had to work on their land. And that's when the Chinese nationalists fled to Taiwan, escaping the onslaught of Mao and the communists. Taiwan was a nation of small sharecroppers paying rents of 50 to 70 percent of the crop. Most of the land was owned by members of 20 families Returns on land were so high that there was little interest in investing in industry. Taiwan had to absorb two million refugees. This retired admiral of ours, Charles M. Cook, was very concerned about what was going to happen to Taiwan. Our government at that point was just exhausted from wars and dealing with wars and at one point, they didn't want to have anything to do with Taiwan. They just said it's outside of our concern. Let the communists do what they want. But Charles Cook you know, did not want to see that happen. And neither did General MacArthur. This is one thing that a lot of us don't realize about what he did in Taiwan. They were very concerned about the Chinese threat. If we do not restore the institution of property, we cannot escape restoring the institution of slavery. Sadly, those are very connected. So this is what the two generals plan to do in Taiwan. It's something called distributism. It's neither socialism nor capitalism. It's like a middle way. And what they devised was very ingenious. The landowners were forced to sell the land to their tenants at a price equal to two and one half times the average crop. The money to buy the land was given to the farmers who repaid it over 10 years. Under this land to the tiller program, 400, 
32,000 families came into possession of their own land and they became anti-communists. It's that simple. They had something that was theirs, something to take care of, something that they could make better. The strategy was twofold. Get capital in the form of land into the hands of farmers and get capital in the form of industrial investment into the hands of entrepreneurs. The actual companies to invest in were picked by the former landowners. They were given bonds and they had to invest them in their country and they had to invest in industry. So they went from being landowners, big landowners, to industrial people. This man is worried about something similar to what happened in Taiwan. Look at Kodak. It invented the digital camera and at one time employed more than 140,000 people giving them all good wages, giving them insurance for their families. The new face of digital photography, Instagram, was sold to Facebook for a billion dollars in 2012. It employed only 13 people. Where did all the jobs go, the digital jobs? of the photography jobs. What happened to the wealth that those middle class jobs created? Instagram isn't worth a billion dollars just because those 13 employees were extraordinary. Instead, its value comes from the millions of users who contribute to the network without being paid for it. <coughs> Networks need a great number of people to participate in them, to generate significant value. But when they have them, only a small number of people get paid. That has the net effect of centralizing wealth and limiting overall economic growth. So it's like back to brief ownership formosa in the digital economy. Instead of enlarging our overall economy by creating more value that is on the books, the rise of digital networking is enriching a relative few while moving the value created by the many off the books. This is a very strange idea, but it's really helpful. Digital information is really just a people in disguise. An example of that is when you pick up your phone and you ask to translate something. You know, where does that translation come from? It came from people. But computers learn it, and so they give you, you know, what the computer has, you know, the, the servers have, and yet they hide the people. We don't know who those people were that helped to give that translation. Cloud networks take free contributions from people and regurgitate them as bait for advertisers or others who hope to take advantage of being close to a top server. In a world of digital dignity, each individual will be the commercial owner of any data that can be measured from that person's state or behavior because information is just people in disguise. So, Pope Francis, we can no longer remain silent before the environmental crisis. And then Chesterton, talking about why he was happy to be a Catholic. I don't need a church to tell me I'm wrong when I know I'm wrong. I need a church to tell me I'm wrong when I think I'm right. The call to humility. And so, 
I want to conclude with the telling you exactly who's going to lose on Tuesday. <laughs> I know exactly who it is. It's this guy, Brian Cowan. He's running for president of the American Solidarity Party. That party happens to be the only one in our country that embraces the full breadth of Catholic social teaching. And yet, he's never been invited to any, any very many Catholic universities. Our Catholic kids don't even know that there is a full spectrum party in our country with those kinds of ideas from you know, respect for the environment, respect for the unborn, as an example of putting things together. And they talk about distributism in that party. So we are one nation under God, and we pray that God's will be done. And that's why it's really important we pray on, you know, for our elections that God's will be done. Because none of us can say that we know the mind of God. None of us can say we know how God is thinking. We wish we could, but we try our best to try to figure it out on our own. Let us pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Father of mercies, we present to you our petitions and the needs of our families and friends. That the worldwide church will always draw strength and perseverance as exemplified by all the unnamed saints who stayed true to their calling. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who suffer the violence of war be blessed with lasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, that all who grieve the loss of a loved one be blessed with healing and acceptance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Barbara C. Cote, Paul Healy, Francis Playford, and Jordan Russell, who have recently passed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for Rose and Pat Leone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Kaylin, Jules, Danielle, and all the young mothers-to-be, that God will bless their pregnancies. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for Jennifer, Luke, William, Gio, Sydney, Arlene, Maureen, Sarah, Brenna, and Nicole, 
For all of our children whose health is fragile and our relatives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for peace in our country, that the rule of law be something that all of us respect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord please hear our prayers. Please bless us in this time of uncertainty. Guide our country so that it may come closer to you. This we pray through Christ our Lord. and brothers, that these our gifts be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that, just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For by your gift we celebrate the festival of your holy city, the heavenly Jerusalem, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice we acclaim. Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her beloved husband, with Father McGivney, that was beatified today in the Knights of Columbus. And with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Pray for all the small businesses that have suffered grievously from the COVID. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us 
us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. Keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another in sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to his banquet. perfect holiness in the fullness of your love. We may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life. Thanks be to God. Oh, oh, oh.